services. Would you help me welcome Dr. Clint Phillips to preach the word to us tonight? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for those incredibly kind words, Pastor. I love this church, I love being here. What an honor it is to stand on this pulpit uh, with so many beautiful people that I've got to know um, in our three or four years of being part of this uh, amazing church. I want to, uh, just before we start, there's a few people to thank. There are so many amazing people who work at this church. Uh, The people who greet you when you walk in and walk out, the people who do sign language, who do the media, who um, clean the band, they are just amazing people. Give them a hand. My favorite, however, are the parking people. I love those parking guys. They're amazing. You know, no matter where you park, no matter how many people there are, they just pull up right there next to you and they are ready to serve you. And I thought, I'll just do this as a little warning, I thought by saying, you know, thank you, that I was doing them a favor. It was less people to actually carry around by saying, you know what, we'll just walk. But they sent me a bit of a message. Two people, boom, came by really close. One of them was like, I'm watching you. You think you're too good to get in my golf cart? You better watch out. So I've learned my lesson. I might be 10 steps from the front door and they pull up and they say, you need a ride? I'm like, there's the, yes, thank you. (laughs) Climb in the cart, move forward 10 paces, get out, thank you so much. Best ride ever. So uh, just great guys. I want to thank our incredible pastor, T-Rex Johnson. He is just amazing. I was doing some math. You know how many people he hugs. I figure that he has hugged, he has given out about 1.7 million hugs. So I looked it up. True as can be in the Guinness World Record, the record is 9,277 hugs. That is like a slow week for pasta. <laughs> Literally, the, the record is in 2013 from Jeff Ondash in Las Vegas. Pasta, we have to get you in there because that is an absolute kindergartner compared to what you have done in your life. Cassidy, man, that superwoman, you give her 90 minutes, she'll lead you in worship, she'll give a profound message, She'll make you a sandwich and she'll spank your children. I mean, (laughs) she can do it all. Just where do you find somebody with like that much passion and uh, ability? Our beloved Patty, thank you for the stability and the love and the, uh, all the, just the, the heart that you have and you put into all these people here, the prayers that you're giving me now. We thank you and we love you. I'm mean, going started right now, but first, Brad, thank you for this honor. Thank you, our senior pastor. When Pastor Rex gave Brad this opportunity, Pastor Rex took us here and he said, Brad, you've got you to take these people even higher. And I believe, Pastor Brad, if you will be part of this church, if you will receive these messages, if you'll apply them in your life, we are going higher. And we thank you, Pastor Brad, for it. Okay, so tonight we are talking about life changing words, life-changing words, words that will completely change your life if you will let them. There's a lot of words in our heads, and a lot of us have built ourselves upon certain words. Mother Teresa, she built her life upon the words of do ordinary things with extraordinary love. Do ordinary things with extraordinary love. And what did she do? She went into the poorest, neediest places and she loved those people. No matter how many scabs and diseases and things they had, she was loving those people. She built her life upon those words. Another hero of mine, Nelson Mandela, he said, you will achieve more in this world through acts of mercy than you will will achieve through acts of retribution. He built his life 
upon understanding forgiveness. He went to prison for 27 years and came out. You put me in prison for 27 days and I will be ready to kill. He comes out after 27 years and he's full of forgiveness and love and changes a nation. Saves a nation from certain war and finds a pathway. What an incredible words to be able to live. The US, you know the official motto of the US is, in God we trust. I mean, that is amazing. A country that says, in God we trust. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen to be able to say, in God we trust as the main motto. And boy, have we seen this country go on to do amazing things. Most importantly, we've seen the words that Ricky Bobby <laughs> built his life on. He built his life on the words, if some of you know them, if you're not first, you're last. And so he builds his entire career on being first, because if you're not, I saw a lady taking a photo of that slide. Please don't make that the only photo you take tonight. <laughs> It's like, look at this heresy going on in this church. But Ricky Bobby finds out later that he has built his life on these words, and his father says, what? When I said those words to you, I was wasted. He said, it doesn't even make sense. What I've said, they said, but dad, I put my whole life on these words. What words have you built your life on? We're gonna explore tonight, and we're gonna explore God's words that we can be building our life on, because words are mighty. Our heads are full of words. Words from our parents, our friends, from social media. All the time they're coming in. And words can start wars. Words can bring peace. But God's word is stronger than any of these words. And we're gonna dive in. First scripture tonight, and we're gonna, we're gonna really move through the Bible in a, in a very special way. Romans 12 verse two said, do not be conformed. What does it say? To this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need a different mind. We have to renew our minds because our minds are continually being corrupted and pulled into this world's thinking. By renewing your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. We're gonna renew our minds here tonight, and this is gonna be just the start of the process for you to be able to renew your mind. Well, how important is it to renew your mind on God's word versus just positive things? Deuteronomy verse, chapter 11, verse 18 says, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart, in your soul, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be frontlets before your eyes. Frontlets are little verses that could be tied to tassels on a hat. We just got back from Israel and see people who actually have these little reminders of scripture in front of them. While they're walking, they see the scripture there in front of them. It says, you shall teach them to your children. These words of God, you should teach them to your children. When you are walking, when you are sitting in your house, when you are lying down, and when you rise. Basically, continually. You go, Clint, this sounds a little bit over the top. Like, really, do I really have to be uh, God's word somewhere on my hands, maybe on is this on my phone? Is this really need to be um, talking to my children when I'm sitting, when I'm walking, when I lie down, when I rise? It says here that you'll write them on your doorposts and your gate. As you come into your house, as you go out of your house, as you go in your gate, you go out of your gate. Really, Lord, this seems to be totally impossible to achieve. It doesn't even seem reasonable. Why would you put such an important big standard on this? It's because God knows how important these words will be to our lives. If we can focus on God's word and we can understand God's word for our lives, we will avoid so much of the pain. We will avoid so many of the problems. 
because we know what God has for us. We know who we are in God, and we're going to get into some of these words. So I want to ask you, are you putting God's word in front of you? Are you still building your life upon God's word? Or are you building your life on the advice of others or the examples you see in other people? I'm gonna talk you through my life and how different verses at different times have been foundational for me as a, as a Christian, as a kid, as a student, as an adult, as a sports person, and I wanna walk you through these. Now these are my verses. Don't steal my verses for you. You gotta find your own verses. But if you like some of these, let them speak. This is what God has shown for me in my life. I know he has got the same and more for your life. But the first verse that I really took to heart, that I first really made my own and I understood, was when I was a kid, I was scared of the dark. Anybody know what it's like to be scared of the dark? I was scared of the dark. And I remember outside the back of our house, there was this dark area with bushes that led to a storeroom. And my mother would sometimes send me out there. And I didn't want to go out there. It was, I could hear stuff. Don't know what it was, but it was just, it didn't, and the dark scared me. And I found the scripture, 2 Timothy 1.7. It says, for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And the first time I heard that scripture, it did nothing. And the second time I heard that scripture, it did nothing. But somewhere along the line, I remember opening that door and saying, Lord, you have given me a sound mind. You have given me a sound mind. I do not have a spirit of fear. And I walked out, and slowly I would walk out into that back area, and soon the fear of the dark disappeared. And those shackles fell off. And I didn't have to keep you know, um, meditating on that scripture because that was now deep in my heart, in my soul. As I was growing up and in my early years of school, we've got some kids here tonight, I was very embarrassed that my parents were divorced, um, that our home life was very tumultuous, and it was uh, embarrassing. I remember lying to kids who would visit and say, oh, my dad's very tired, he's upstairs, or my dad's away on a business trip. Um, and I remember getting in a little trouble and a headmaster at the school grabbed me one day and he said, I know kids like you, I've seen kids like you, you amount to nothing. Those were his words. Those were his words. But God had some very different words for me because my mother spoke over me these words, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, <laughs> above and not beneath. The first time I heard that, it did nothing. The hundredth time I heard that, it did nothing. But somewhere between three and 10 years later, I don't know when, I started to realize that I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. And when somebody wanted to put me down, when somebody wanted to you know, belittle me, I would say, you know what? I don't have to worry about you because I know that God says I am the head and not the tail. Amen? Some of these things take a little while to manifest and for God to really, to be able to see, but we're planting seeds. We are planting seeds into our life and watching what grows out of those words. South Africa is full of crime. So we had a huge problem of crime. And when South Africans get together, they talk about, did you hear about so-and-so was robbed? Oh my gosh, they poisoned the dog. <gasps> they tied them up. They had a gun to their head. Oh, they actually, and worse happen to these, and you hear these stories every week, and I mean, this can get into you, this, the fear about crime, what's gonna happen, especially when this is happening all around you. But we learned about Psalm 91, and that whole chapter will give you confidence, and my grandparents had us recite Psalm 91, it's a long chapter, but verse 11 says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, I said, Lord, I, I, when I travel for sport, if I travel to school, if I'm away, Lord, we need your angels to protect us. And I tell you, we got to walk in confidence when other people couldn't go out their house because they were crippled by fear. We could go out and say, you know what? We believe that God will protect us. 
We believe that he will encamp his angels around us and we didn't have to walk around with the fear that so many people walked about. Amen? Amen. I love the sport rugby. As a rugby player, I came to the, to the States to play rugby and it was just this great position, but I was never big enough. Coach always was like, oh, if you were just a little bigger. So I'm packing on weights and I'm eating everything I can find and I can't keep the weight on and I'm not really tall enough for the position always. And then just as I'm in the shape of my life, the rugby club would go and bring like an import that brings somebody in. And I remember this was gonna be my season. I was in the shape of my life, I was playing great rugby and one day I arrive and Goliath is standing on the field. (laughs) He is Goliath. He must be 350 pounds, seven foot tall. I'm like, who is this freak? Where has he come from? And he's come from some farm in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, but surely he can't play. I mean, at that size, we start playing and he just runs over everybody. He's just flicking them off as they're trying to tackle him. I'm like, what position does he play? Oh, he plays your position. Like, oh Lord, help me. You guys don't know rugby, but it's somewhat similar to football. He runs in a touchdown, and then you know they have the kicker come on. He tells the kicker, wait. He does the kick as well. I'm like, what? I've never seen this in my life. How's the receiver? He's a, you know, he's every position on the field, even the kicker. And so I'm like, there goes my position, there goes my season. But I had been encouraged when I saw the Fijian rugby players who put Philippians 4.13 on their jersey. Their national jersey says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'm like, Lord, do you think I can get that position on the team? Can you help me get that position on the team? And you know what? I got that position on my team. And the freak went to another country and went and killed... (laughs) He killed people wherever he went. But I got my position, and I would scribble the words. In, I'm sitting in class, and I'm writing, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'm meditating. I'm saying, Lord, how far can I really take the scripture? How far can I really trust you to say that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? In college, I was in medical school, and I wasn't a great student. We started with 50 people in our class, and there was a few people in the class that I really could get along with, just some nice, good, fun people. But slowly, they all dropped out, and now I'm just left with the nerds. And we've gone from 50 to 20, and I used to have a bit of a crew, and I got no crew left because those people are like, this is way too hard, I'm out of here. And uh, I'm trying to stay in the course here, and Sundays is, was known as like your real study day. You had class all day and you had you know, uh, things that you had to do as part of your training and as playing sport. But Sunday was a 15 to 16 hour study day that people would talk about, man, I could get 15 hours done on Sunday. But you know what? I had church in the morning. We did children's church and we had two services. It was about four and a half hours maybe five hours, and to make things worse, we came back on a Sunday night. I loved Sunday night, it was an incredible service. We saw God do incredible, but it's very hard to get 15 hours when most of your day is spent at God's house. And I'm like, man, how am I going to be able to be a good student? How am I gonna get through college? How am I gonna be able to compete with these kids? But I found 1 Corinthians that said, I have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And I'd say, Lord, man, I don't know exactly how your mind worked, but I bet you had a good memory. And I don't know all the insides, but I bet you were really good at like solving difficult stuff. So Lord, could you just lend me your brain power for just a little time? Because my brain's not as good as some of these other people and I haven't had the time. And the Lord would answer those prayers. And I found the scripture that says, when you brought before the synagogues and authorities, don't worry about what you should say or how you will defend yourself. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what to say. I say, Lord, I'm not being brought up before the government, but I'm being brought up before these professors. Is it okay if you help me like you helped 
These guys, when they're brought up, because this is the authority that I'm up against. And I remember one, uh, we were doing a practical exam, the professor was testing us. We didn't know much. There's a gazillion diseases we're trying to learn. And uh, my friend and I, we, we both uh, shared a common love for the Lord and we studied together, we played rugby together on Mikey. And uh, Mikey and I had been studying and we prayed before, we're like, Lord, just help us, man. Help us, we need your help. And so anyway, we're going through this, this practical exam and they, the professor asks you a question. If you get that, you sort of know you've got 50%. And then the questions get harder, 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 harder as you get 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And you know, I'm hoping I can get to 70. I'm gonna be, you know, okay, maybe 80. And anyway, I get the first question. I get the second question. I get the third question. She's asking it and uh, my friend Mikey's just gone before me and he's pretty impressed and it gets to the last question. I'm at 90%. And this is the bonus one. You're like, oh, whatever. You know, I wasn't getting the best grades. And uh, she says, what do you consider this condition to be? And I have no clue. But I hear the words in my mind, Bell's palsy. Never heard that word before in my life. Never heard anything. And I'm like, Bell's palsy? My friend starts laughing next to me. He's like, dude, just say I don't know. You don't have to make up stuff. But his face turns white when he looks at the examiner and she says, correct. He walks out and says, dude, never heard of that. Where did that come from? I said, God told me. <laughs> what? I walked out of that exam like a gangster. <laughs> like I'd been shot twice in the leg. I mean, it was unbelievable. I heard God standing in front of the authorities. I asked him, but I said, Lord, you said that you will speak to us if we'll ask you. And the Lord answered that prayer. That, you never forget that. That never goes away from you. You know, I needed favor. I came to America. I knew nobody. I didn't have any connections. I didn't have any college alumni. I didn't have any family. And I'm like, Lord, I need favor. I need your help, I don't, I don't know anybody. I know a few rugby players who, you know, get drunk after a game. It's not that they're not very helpful people. Lord, I need your help. And I looked through all the scriptures around every verse that it said around favor, I underlined and I started to write down and I came across Proverbs 12 verse two that says, a good man obtains favor from the Lord. When I got married, I found the scripture in Proverbs 18 that says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Hey. I said, Lord, I'm expecting a little boost in the favor, in the connections, and my goodness, has the Lord favored my life? Would my beautiful family please stand up tonight? I've got uh, Jade, my wife, my son, Clinty, my daughters, Faith and Gabby. They're amazing. I love them. And it's lovely to just have them know our story of what God has done along the way. Well, I started a job and I started working and I was trained as a physical therapist and chiropractor and... Um, I'm starting to help people, and it's really good, but the one bad thing about when you help people, they bring their friend who's got a bigger problem than them. <laughs> like, whoa, one day a guy walks in the office and he's straight vertical back. Like, what am I gonna do with these people? They were getting worse and worse, and I'd see their x-ray, and I'd look at their story, and I'd go, Lord Jesus, help me, help me. And they lying on the table, and I've got one hand in the air, and I'm singing mighty to save. Like, Lord, save here, you can move the mountain. But the word says, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And I said, Lord, I need your help. So this person thinks I can do something that I cannot do. The exercises that I have and the therapy that I have cannot heal this person. 
can maybe make them feel a little better, but they need a miracle, Lord. And I lay hands on, lay hands on these people and they get off and they say, wow, I feel so much better. You are so good at what you do. I say, man, I pray for everybody. Everybody gets on this table, you're getting prayer because I don't know. But one day, I remember a guy comes into the clinic, six foot two, six foot three, probably in his 60s, and we're having this great conversation. And we're really connecting, and it's his first day, and he stands up off the table, he says, Clint, this was great. Oh! And he goes into a rigid board, and he hits the floor. Complete seizure, his back seizes. We have to call an ambulance for him. The place where I'm renting doesn't want me to have any trouble and I'm, I'm gonna lose my rent. But I don't know, in America, when the ambulance arrives, the ambulance can't come in without the police coming in before. So now I've got a policeman at the door, my next patient is arriving and there's the police and the ambulance at the door. <laughs> it's the end of my career. Before it even started, Lord, this is crazy, like this is the end. I said, Lord, but help me. I need your help. A good man obtains favor from the Lord. Lord, you said to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And then it, as this, lay, this guy's wife arrives, she comes and I said, hey, I'm really sorry. He was doing so well. And he's like, don't worry. You know, and she's like, I'm gonna bury you. <laughs> Here's this rich, rich woman comes and says, I'm going to bury you. I'm just trying to help. I call him the next day. His wife answers, no, he will not talk to you. Call a later, I just wanna know how he's doing, he's not doing well. I get hold of him a few days later, I say, how are you doing, sir? He says, I'm great. Two days after you worked on me, I had the best round of golf of my entire life. I love you. I wanna see you as often as I can see you. <laughs> the Lord doesn't let you down. That mean lady, she called me a few weeks later, she said, I'd like to come see you. I, said, I wouldn't like to see you. But you know what, she came, I didn't wanna see her. She sat on my table and she sobbed her eyes out. And we prayed together. And we prayed together for this hard, broken lady. Because of the incredible God we serve and the favor that he has. As I started my company, it was, um, it was very hard, I'm in this little Colorado town. There's like 10 chiropractors and 20 physical therapists in this little town. Like in a town that size in South Africa, there would be nobody. There's 30 people competing with me in this little town. I'm like, Lord, I, um, I need your help. My business is struggling. Proverbs 22 verse 29 I found, it says, see a man who excels in his work, he will stand before kings, he will not stand before unknown men. And I started to grab hold of that scripture and said, Lord, could you put me in front of kings? Could you put the right people, could you send the right people? Royal families came to our clinic. Those royal families, we went to visit those royal families in their countries. You wanna feel special? Get out the airport when the royal person is coming there to get you from the airport. It's very special. That is the favor of the Lord. Not in my wildest dreams could it have ever happened, but that is God's word that said, if I'll excel at what I do, Lord, I'm just gonna do the best I can today. I'm not sure what to do, but I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna lay my hands on these people I'm gonna read up, I'm gonna research, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna do whatever I can because Lord, I want to see you do your work. Amen. Waking up, any of you have trouble waking up in the morning? Nobody? <laughs> Nobody? Four of you, well I'm just talking to you four, the rest of you people, I don't, yeah, I'm jealous. I struggled for years to wake up until I found the verse, this is the day the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it. The first time I say that, first time I say it, this is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad. Lord, I'm not feeling it. I don't know that I can get out of bed. The second time, this is the day oh, the Lord has made. 
I will rejoice. Okay, Lord, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to be glad in it. The third time I say that scripture, that day, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's go. Get out of that bed. Struggling to fall asleep at night. Can't sleep. Some of my best moments at night have been during insomnia because I get to talk to the Lord. But I've learned that he says he gives his beloved sleep. I say, Lord, you give your beloved sleep. Am I your beloved? What? Yes, I know I'm your beloved. Your word says I'm your beloved. So I need some sleep. Can you help me out? I really need you. And if I took a tablet to get rid of that, I'd miss that incredible opportunity to be able to see what God has for me. Anxiety, I don't know if I could keep going with these foundational pieces for a long time. Anxiety, I've had anxiety until you read Philippians 4, 6 that says, be anxious for nothing, for nothing, Lord. I've got serious problems, nothing. But Lord, even if I've got multiple problems at the same time, can I be anxious then? No, be anxious for nothing. But in all, in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. Amen. God's thinking is so different to the thinking of the world. It's completely different. I'm gonna fly through a few things here with you to get ready. Get your cameras out, put it on if you need, but one of these may really take a hold in you. The world says you have no purpose. God says, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Plans to give you a future and a hope, so don't tell me you don't have purpose. The world says you are not special. God says, I knit you in the womb. I know the amount of hairs on your head. The TV says this pill will fix you. God says, I am your healer. There's no side effects. Seen those pills, all the side effects. Instagram says you are oppressed. God says you are the head and not the tail. You're a child of the living God. TikTok says you aren't valuable because you've got so few followers, like me. God says you are my child. You have value. I created you. Your friend says, you don't have to forgive them. God says, you don't forgive them, I won't forgive you. It's the opposite. It's the complete opposite. You see how much we need to renew our mind. God's word, let it change you. Let it change you. It can change every part of your life. Culture says, you deserve to be offended. God says offenses will come. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials and tribulations. You've got no right to be offended. The world says it's okay to look at other girls. God says rejoice in the wife of your youth. The media says do what you want with your body. God says your body is the temple of the living God. Before you do stuff to your body, you better take it to God. It's your body is his temple. If I haven't offended you yet, I'll keep trying. <laughs> I'm offending myself. Culture says your family are losers. God says, honor your father and mother so that you may live a long life. Only fans says, lust won't hurt you. God's word says, the adulterous woman will destroy you. You're like an ox being led to the slaughter, God's words, oblivious that this will cost you your life. Your mind says, I can't switch off, I've got ADD. God says, be still and know that I am God. The psychologist says, that's just the way you are. It's just who you are, that's just your name. God says, you are a new creation. All things have passed away, behold, all things are new. The devil says, God can't forgive you for that. Anybody felt that way? That God can't forgive you? 
My favorite scripture says, his mercies are new every morning. Oh, Lord, thank you, it's a new day. Your mercies are new. I start with a clean slate. Your word says it. I believe it. My little girl, every night I hear her recite something. I didn't give it to her. I didn't do it. I want you to come out. I've just asked her. I'm going to have to get her a gift because she really didn't want to do it. But every night, Gabby, what is it that I hear you pray when you go to bed? I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm more than a conqueror, and I'm destined for great things in you, Lord. And I have great faith over any fear, Lord. Yes and amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Can you imagine those are the last words coming out of her mouth every night over the years, what that's going to do in her, through her, with her relationship with God? I'm so over time here, I'm sorry. But I just wanna say, don't believe the lies. Don't believe the lies. Build your life on God's word. Don't build your life on culture. This culture will change. These opinions will change. Build your life on God's word. What an amazing service. On behalf of our pastoral team, leadership team, and staff, we want to thank you for tuning in to Christian Life Austin online. We pray that this service remains in your heart and helps lead you to your next steps on your faith journey. And we want to take a moment to allow you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you've never made that choice before, whether you're watching us in your living room, your kitchen, or on vacation, we know that Jesus will meet you right where you are. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if you want salvation today, it's as simple but as powerful as confessing Jesus as Lord of your life and having faith that God raised him from the dead. So let's take a moment right here and right now to pray together. Would you join me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this day and for this time. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that there are hearts that are hungry for more of you and that are looking, God, to take their next step. So right now, we pray that this prayer be the next step in people's lives today. God, we repent of all of our sins. We are sinners saved by grace. So Lord, cleanse us and wash us and purify us, God, of all of our sins. God, we confess with our mouth that you are the Lord of our life. From this day forward, we are putting you first as Lord of our life. God, we acknowledge and we understand that you died, that you were buried and that you rose again. Lord, we thank you for what you did for us on Calvary. Lord Jesus, from this day forward, we are putting you first and we're putting our trust in you, Lord. We thank you for all the life change that is happening right here and now. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Wow, congratulations to all of you who made the decision to give your life to Jesus. All of heaven is celebrating with you. And hey, we're celebrating with you too. But no, this is only step one. We want you to know that you're not alone on this walk. And we're not leaving you to figure it out by yourself. We want to partner with you as you walk through our core values, which is know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference in the lives of others. We would love to help you take your next step, whether that's through water baptism or joining a life group or getting plugged in serving through Growth Track. We have everything you need to make this process easy, accessible, and applicable to you in your life. No matter what stage of life you're in, you are somebody at Christian Life Austin, and you are somebody to the kingdom of heaven. We want to know what your next step is, and we want to hear from you if you gave your life to Jesus today. Please click the link in the description so we can get connected with you. Again, thank you for tuning in, and we cannot wait to see you in person at Christian Life Austin.